Hi, this is Silas. I'm going to talk about how Terra is relative. Now, I'm going to talk about different aspects of Terra, just how does an action come off as something that you consider Terra versus something that you might not even care about or you actually think is a positive thing. So this is all about relatability, how you relate to that situation, both the action itself, the happening itself, the people participating in it, the people who did it, the people who are affected by it. So I'm going to go with the first part is, are your relatives in danger? If something happens to your family members, your brothers, your sisters, your children, your family, your clan, your tribe, someone you consider part of your in-group, you're going to relate to that action in an entirely different way. A good example is the past attack that happened in Charlottesville, I think a few, uh, 10 days ago or so. There was an attack in Charlottesville, West Virginia. I mean, Charlottesville, Virginia. There was a Unite the Right, um, Unite the Right rally, and some protesters, anti-protesters on the left, came in. And throughout the whole process, there was fights, there were scuffles, there was things like that. Somebody drove a vehicle, ended up running through the crowd, injured about twelve people, killed one person. So now people on the left, both politically on the left, just the regular citizens the extreme alt-left people out there in the left, those more activist type people, the media, which is heavily biased towards the left, are rallying behind this and saying, yes, this is a thing. This is exactly what we are talking about that's coming from the right. This is the violence from the right. Yet, if you're more towards the right, I'm involved with what's going online and I am involved with some people on the right. I'm just trying to see as this thing was unfolding, how people were relating to this. We're saying, oh, who is this person? Why did this person do this? This is not what we support. And I'm wondering, when something happens on the left, political violence on the left, there's probably the same thing that comes out. There's probably some people out there who are having these same conversations, like the shooting of um, Representative Scalise, which was at the baseball game. Somebody came out, asked, are these Republicans? And somebody said yes, then they end up shooting at the baseball field, injuring a few people, and they ended up getting shot and killed. Were people there also making excuses, saying, okay, this is not who we support, this is not what we do. So that just shows you consider yourself on the political left, you consider yourself on the political right, violence happens in a political sphere, you relate to that in a different way. So now, relative proximity is the next part I'm going to discuss. With relative proximity, I'll use some examples I personally have experienced. Uh, I, was, I think it was last year, I was back in Nairobi at the time, Nairobi, Kenya. And here, right now, I'm in New York. There was a couple of bombings, a couple of bombs left in the streets. And it was on, I think, 27th and 7th Avenue or something. 27th Street and 7th Avenue. And I remember seeing that on the news and being like, wow, that's right by this grocery store I often go to. I could have been there. And then that made me recall this experience I had while living in Nairobi. I think it was 2014. It might have been wrong about the actual date. But there was a Westgate attack, the Westgate Mall attack, which some of you might have heard of. 66 people were killed in this attack. I had been at that mall, which was about three kilometers away from where I lived. I had been at that mall three days out in the week before that attack. So I could have been there. Somebody living in the compound that I was in had actually left that mall 20 minutes before this attack happened. One of their friends was actually still in there after the attack happened, got shot in the leg, but they got out safe. So that relative proximity to these both of these attacks has changed my view on not just those attacks, but just how random in nature these terrorist attacks can be. Now, that's the relatability of these things. What makes that in-group, out-group kind of atmosphere? What makes a situation where something happens and then you start thinking, okay, maybe this was different. Maybe this wasn't terror. Maybe this was a lone gunman. Maybe this was just a crazy person. Why do you excuse certain things and then in other situations be like, this is terror? That definition of terrorism, this whole idea that the unlawful use of violence against civilians and non-combatants with a political means, why is it considered to be not terrorism if a state, somebody that you voted for, politicians you voted for, order a military that you support to go out and bomb combatants apparently in another location and that ends up killing civilians in that location. Why do you consider that not terrorism? Is that lawful under the laws that those people 
agreed to live under. And that's something you have to kind of think of. You have to think of what is this global law? What is the actual law that makes something lawful in in your group? What makes something lawful when it's your team doing it? What makes it not terrorism when you do it, when somebody you know does it, but makes it terrorism when it's done against you? And now I'm going to bring in two, two stories in two popular forms of media right now, Game of Thrones and The Watchmen, which are... Game of Thrones, I just watched the finale of season seven. So spoilers are going to start here if you haven't seen it. But the dragon situation. Dragon goes over. Dragon used to be like, wow, this is what's bringing people to the show. It's on the good guy's side. A lot of people are supporting Daenerys Targaryen, who is the mother of dragons. And then she loses a dragon to the White Walkers, who have been, I think, the big bads of this universe. The threat from the north coming in. And now that dragon is on that side. So that same thing that first brought people joy, and especially it brought people joy in the means that this was a terrifying, terrifying creature. That's a cheat code, pretty much. But since it's being used by somebody we support, terrorizing other people, all of a sudden that's something we're going to get behind. And then in this episode, you see the dragon being used by the main villains in this. Well, I'd say they're the main villains in this to initiate the attack or to continue the attack upon the people that you are supporting. So that just shows that that same action, once you support an action, if it's used against you, it can turn from something positive to something very terrifying. Just at the drop of the hat, just depending on how you relate to it, what angle you're... Are you on the dishing out end or you're in the receiving end of that same action? So it's a very dangerous thing to support certain... certain actions, set certain precedents, allow for certain behavior because that can easily be used against you now with Watchmen, which is to me one of the i think it's one of the best fictional stories i've ever heard and definitely one of the best book i mean comic book to movie translations that i've ever seen there was a slight change in this in this storyline from the main villain ozymandias in the comic book he creates this he uses his scientists his knowledge his technology his money to create these artificial beings that are supposedly alien creatures to make them seem like alien creatures and he drops these alien creatures in capital cities all around the world those cities land i mean those creatures land of course smash people below them then they blow up and kill people in a certain radius and then they send out this psychic shock wave that terrorizes people that gives people mental issues post from like kind of ptsd type things just messes with people's heads and unites the world together against this alien threat. It makes people finally relate to each other because the world was... different warring factions in the world were fighting each other. They were combating each other. Different nations were coming coming to war. But then this attack against everyone, this indiscriminate attack against everyone, unites the human race against this threat from outside. In the, com- in the, the film, I mean, in the film they use Dr. Manhattan, who's the most superpowered character in this, in this universe, as the main person, then that person leaves and goes out to space. So with this one, in the film, it gets to the point where they have to think, okay, this lie that has united us, the protagonists have to think, are we going to go out and tell the rest of the world that this wasn't an alien, that Dr. Manhattan wasn't the one that did this? Are we going to expose that it was a lie, even though this has brought us relative peace and unity. And I think this trope that you see going along in different stories comes from what we see when disasters happen. Right now, there's an ongoing disaster happening in Texas. There's the biggest hurricane to make landfall in Texas in 20 years, passed through, and I think at last time I checked, I mean, six people were dead. Hundreds of thousands have been displaced. They're still expecting about two feet of rain. So, It's going to get worse before it gets any better. But in times of disaster, people come together. In times of terror, people come together, be it huge terror attacks, like things that happened with the Twin Towers here in uh, New York, or be it in a small village somewhere else where a drone passes by and drops some bombs and kills some people that you kind of thought were bad, but also ends up killing a few of these kids in the neighborhood that just happened to be playing there at that time that unites those groups in that way. So are we doomed to have a situation where really horrible things have to happen to unite us together? 
is it a situation where we're going to be united with these terrifying activities and then let go of these micro divisions that we have and then just go back to those micro divisions after and i don't think so i think I think the same way that I say, look, this president or this action, this person didn't bring out the worst in somebody, did not, Donald Trump is not responsible for making the country divided like people on the left will say or people often say, oh, he's emboldened these people. I don't think people necessarily put these in you. These people, these events, these disasters, this feeling of terror does not put something new in you. It doesn't put something in you that isn't already in you. It may give you reason to do it. It may make you relate to people in a different way, but I don't think we need, I don't think we need the terror to do that, to keep us together. I don't think we need the lies and the horror. I don't think we need to be running away from things for us to be moving in the same direction anymore. I think there's more than enough ways to actually find ways where we can relate to each other and understand that we actually are united in a certain way. Huh. So yeah, this is something that I, I'm hoping to do somewhat in making these videos and just trying to get ideas out, trying to relate to the thoughts that I have in my mind and try to get them out there and try to share opinions and ideas that I have. and understand why it is that different things happen for the same reasons you know why does one action happen and then it be treated by a certain group in a certain way and it be treated by another group in a certain way so yeah this kind of petered down a bit towards the end here and so i was trying to figure this out i i'm going to touch on this again this is just a thought that i had a few a few days ago while it was while actually hearing about the attacks in, I mean, in hearing about the hurricane in Texas and then seeing this thing online about the MTV awards where people are out there talking about how terrible Trump is, like we need to resist and they're just in this bubble. They cannot relate to what's happening to the people in Texas during this time. And then also made this video about the Colin McGregor fight, Colin McGregor and Floyd Mayweather fight, and I'm like, hmm, why am I focusing on these things instead of the horrific situation, the disaster that's happening in Texas, and yeah. But then, that's the thing, I had the ability to just go on social media and see people on in Texas saying, I need help, or checking in saying, I'm okay, or showing video of the place, and people saying, wow, this is horrible, I can't believe this is happening, this reminds me of this, this reminds me of that, like, I think those same things, the same tools that are being used to create these micro divisions, to divide people together, the same way MTV is out there, these people, these small group of people are out there and whoever is watching them is watching that and saying, wow, why are these people so out of touch? Why are they discussing this? Why are these millionaires? I know they have their own issues too, but why are these millionaires out there talking about how horrible the president is while the president is out there focusing on trying to help the hundreds of thousands and millions of people affected in Texas at that time? just just very frustrating in that situation but i mean here you guys are listening to this thanks for listening to this but after this you can go out and communicate with other people you can find somebody that you think you can't relate to and try to understand where they're coming from or you can try to do a job but a good job of trying to explain where you're coming from to somebody else that might not be able to relate to you you might be able to try to understand why some people may actually outright hate you and find out do they hate me for an actual reason do i hate them for an actual reason do i dislike this person for an actual reason am i really terrified of something for a valid reason or am i terrified of it because somebody else has lied to me or because it's just something i just can't yet relate to so yeah um that was the video for today and <laughs> till next video let me know what you guys think. Has there been an action that has happened to you that you once considered terrifying that now if it happens or it does happen, you're like, eh, it's nothing, or it's something that now you're used to? Is there something you consider terrifying that you actually now do and actually get other people to not consider that terrifying? So yeah, um, I'll talk about this again later, but like, share, and subscribe. Some links below, and um, till next video, goodbye.